William, we've just been talking a bit about the, the carbon markets. Um, if you looked on Bloomberg now, I dare say you might find the carbon markets aren't looking in fantastic shape. I mean, are, is, there, is there any future in the carbon markets? Well, I think there's a future in the carbon markets, and there's a future in the carbon markets in the compliance and the voluntary markets. Um, the, I think the key question that needs to happen is, uh, that needs to be asked is just where these proje proje projects are actually taking place. Um, for instance, I'm actually based in, in Mali, and there's actually only one CDM project, but there's a, there's a number of voluntary projects that are happening in West Africa. So we need to look at how to encourage more more projects happening in areas that have not been um, there. There is there have not been enough focus on. Uh, All right, now run me through how this works. So you're based in Mali. How do you verify? How do you work out how much a factory or even a car is emitting in terms of CO2? Um, well, we're actually. I mean, the the. The area that I'm working in, we're actually not looking at how much emission, how the the amount of emissions that are actually being done by a uh, by a factory. We're actually looking at small scale projects over in West Africa. So we're looking at uh, cook stove projects, and we're looking at um, projects that can be scaled up in West Africa, and how we can accompany those uh, those project developers in in, in creating um, you know a bigger impact in the area. Um, if we were to look at um, how to calculate emissions, I mean, we would. Go, I mean, there's plenty of calculators out there. Um, I mean, calculators are a big debate um, in how they're um, evaluating how offsets are, are, are being determined. But uh, um, I mean, it's a kind of a controversial subject. But uh, yeah, yeah, for sure. And Mali in West Africa, what is the situation with regards to sort of the carbon markets and carbon? finance in West Africa, does, does it exist? It does exist. Um, it exists in, in the CDM. I mean, there's a lot of projects happening in areas where there are um, big industry. So, for example, in Nigeria, where there's a lot of petrol, there's a lot of CDM projects happening in, in, in Nigeria. Um, where there's not a lot of projects happening is where there's not a lot of emissions actually being emitted. Um, for instance, in Mali, um, there's, there's not a lot of big industry, so therefore um, CDM is not moving there. That said, there are voluntary projects that are happening in these areas, um, and these projects can kind of take smaller projects um, or renewable energy and energy efficiency projects and actually scale them up. So there is a lot of room for um, growth in West Africa. Uh, we just need to make sure that the meth methodologies are adapted to the region and that the information um, is available and accessible to project developers. Are there, are there safeguards in place to prevent corruption? Because we've had examples of corruption in, in Europe in terms of carbon credits, billions of euros of carbon credits going missing. Are there, are there safeguards? Because many might say, well, you know, introducing carbon finance in West Africa is, is, is just you know, tantamount to you know, offering up more more opportunities for corruption. Well, I mean, yes, sir. I mean, I mean, as any big industry, there's always risk for corruption. But that said, I mean, for voluntary projects that are verified by a standard such as gold standard, there's enough auditing going on. There's enough verifying the emissions are actually being um, uh, actually being realized w during the project lifetime and the project activity. Um, but the the key is that the the, the project emissions need to be monitored, and they need to, and we need to be able to follow where those project, where those emissions are going. Mm -hmm. So there is no double counting, there is, and that these um, offsets are actually being happening during the project activity. Okay, and tell us a bit about the work that you're particularly working on in Mali. Um, well, I'm part of an initiative called Ethi Carbon, and the Ethi Carbon initiative is, is actually originated through three um, NGOs: um, Jeris, um, Nexus Carbon for Development, and a local uh, Malian NGO called Rizzo Carbon. And it's actually funded by the ADEM, which is the French Agency for Energy and Development. Um, now, what we're looking at is how we can um, evolve the carbon markets in West Africa, how we can make um, the information more accessible and digestible. For instance, um, fr uh, Francophone West Africa um, is, I mean, a lot of the information is only in English. So um, one of our initial um, projects was to create the documentation so project de developers can understand um, the 
the ability to access carbon finance and also to understand how it works.